last question we had coming in here from uh, Alex uh, Volcanegra is, uh, are you ever really 100% covered? <laughs> and I love that question because that, that's a good one. Right? <laughs> like, are you hey, ever the, 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 oh, fair, that was hard that that to answer. What's up, you guys? We just finished Ask Alex number 60. We had an incredible special guest, our insurance broker, Lorena. And man, I mean, she went into some of the biggest topics on risk management and insurance. Alex, what were your biggest takeaways, man? Man, that was a fantastic webinar. People were just glued to their seats. Um, I noticed that she went over three big takeaways, which were number one, how to properly insure your flips to have the right policies, right? And then also how to look at an umbrella policies if you have a you know a large portfolio and to protect everything and pay less insurance. And then I think finally was finally we discussed some of the delays the delays that can happen when you don't have your insurance in a, in a you know in order when you're buying property. So make sure you guys tune in and watch a whole webinar because this is super valuable to like doing deals on investment property and making sure everything's insured properly. Yo yo, what's up? What's up? everybody um let me get everybody kind of going right now today we are talking all about insurance everybody i think it's everybody's favorite subject talk about insurance and how to best be prepared for something happening to your property or one of the projects that you're working on so excited about bringing on lorena today she's been insuring our property for the last year a year and a half at least and uh man she is an all-star she also owns pretty large portfolio in an area that we do a lot of investing in. So there's just a lot of alignment there with her. Let me get my man, Will Wall in the building. Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna be going over the do's, the don'ts, um, some best practices, what to look for when you're potentially finding a claim on a property. We recently had a property we're gonna talk about as well that we had an insurance claim on. We didn't wanna have to file one, but it flooded while we had it listed. Um, ended up turning out amazing, but it was quite a headache. So uh, definitely, we're gonna, like, my man Will is at his house hack in Hawthorne, South Bay, uh, Los Angeles, and he's putting in some work, man. He's getting some elbow grease, some sweat equity. How you doing, dude? Putting in that work, baby. Getting that elbow grease in, man. Like, uh, like you said, man, down here putting in a little bit of work and, and uh, you know, getting some work done on the side. And also really excited for the webinar today because, like you said, I mean, insurance is always kind of that last thing that you think of, but sometimes you're like, whoa. Like we don't even have this thing insured. And so um, I'm really fired up to talk to Lorena in, in you know, general, just because she's also an investor, right? And uh, I think we'll kind of dive into that a little bit more here on the call. But dude, this is going to be an awesome call, man. I'm, I'm always fired up when we bring on a special guest. And, and this one, I'm super, super excited for. Uh, like you said, like we've actually had to use our insurance of late. And so this will be fun to kind of discuss. Um, you know, some of the different things that newer investors might want to know about real estate insurance, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and it's also, we're all going to talk about too, how, you know, sometimes, you know, not having that taken care of on the front end when you're dealing with, you know, purchasing property um, can really be a, an issue and potentially some delays. And uh, we, we're going to share with, you know, kind of our experience with that. Uh, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely you know, I think that we're going to drop some value for everybody. Uh, and we know for a fact that, uh, Lorena knows what she's talking about. She's been in the business a long time. So she has plenty of examples she can use about people you know, not insuring property the right way, uh, people being a little bit, uh, I guess, omitting omitting things to her, you know, to their broker. And um, also just like when filing claims, all that good stuff on how to go about things. You just get the best results because um, the reason insurance companies get kind of like this bad rap, like, uh, you know, they don't want to pay claims out and things like that. And, and um, so you really got to have your guns loaded and have, all your ducks in a row if you're going to be fighting an insurance claim or, you know, and or insuring investment property on a regular basis. So, cool, man. Yeah, and like you said, I mean, you know, it's, it's great to have somebody like Lorena on here because she's been in the trenches, been out there doing it herself. And, uh, you know, again, there, there's there's something to be said about lying to your insurance broker, right? Like, that's a no-no. You know, like, you can lie about doing permits, you can lie about certain things like that, but, like, you want to kind of be as forthcoming as you can with your insurance uh, agent, your broker, and let them know the full scope of the project. Um, you know, there's a lot of key things that can protect you uh, on the back end if you take care of them on the front end. So that should be super fun. Uh, what we'll do, guys, is, is we'll get things going here. And uh, in the meantime, if everybody can, I see Ben and Ulysses, a couple other folks already getting things started. But uh, go ahead and use the chat down there. Just go ahead and let us know where it is that you're tuning in from. Uh, where we can find you on Instagram. I know I see a lot of familiar faces and a couple new ones in here. 
And then uh, in the meantime, like you said, Alex, I'm down here at my house hack, kind of doing some work down here, but what's kind of been going on with you, man? Yeah, uh, just, uh, yeah, I want to reiterate that what uh, Will just said is make sure you use a chat feature, put your information where you're at, what you're working on if you want to as well, just because everybody here has different skill levels, different uh, resources. And so the whole point of this is to, to educate, but also to connect, right, with um, with everybody within the, and I, I see a couple, um, we we'll shout out to my man, Fernando, I think he's in the house, um, had a great time in Monterrey. And so talking about that, I was in Monterrey last week. And um, so I just finished up my trip there, um, hopped over to Guadalajara, but uh, dude, the eight or seven or eight days I was there, uh, were amazing. I got to do a lot of hiking, amazing food, um, super clean, safe, and beautiful city. Um, you know, I kind of checked that off the list. One of my goals is to look at, you know, be it, visit 10 places I've never been. And I did that two of them in January, which are Mexico City and Monterrey. So that's been amazing. But on the business level, we locked up two new deals, you guys, uh, in Mojave. Uh, we are buying it from a wholesaler we know. Um, our project manager and a rock star um, you know, partner at times, Paul is out there going to be knocking out the park there. He owns uh, multiple properties himself, um, independent from us over there, and he has a great crew. So super excited about getting a couple of Mojave deals done. Um, we also locked in a new deal today in Vegas, baby. So we got a deal. Shout out to Ilium. And uh, also my, my brother George and his network got us the uh, opportunity. And then uh, we have, we're working with closely with one of our um, investor friends out there to you know see what we're going to do with the property. We're going to keep it. We're going to flip it. Or we're going to wholesale it. We're not sure yet, but um, you know that's amazing. It just kind of came out of the woodwork, and you know we put it into the machine, and looks like we got a contract on that. Um, also, Alex, I would... before you go on there on the rest of your update, like again, like that's something super cool, right? Like you know getting a lead out of state and still being able to execute on it. Um, you know that just kind of goes to show that like it's it's a system that we're kind of building out here and. You know, an offer is an offer. It doesn't matter where it is. You still are going to put in the same level of back work, the same level of background, you know, research that you would on any deal anywhere. Uh, but yeah, again, like you said, Alex, like super exciting to be able to lock down a deal with the team. One of our team members, Ilium, um, a Spanish speaking, you know, client. And so just was going back and forth, had to dust off some of his, uh, you know, negocio is what they call it, negocios, uh, business person language. It's a little bit different than some of the Spanish language you might use on a, a regular basis. So again, Alex, like kudos to you for, for building the team and, and uh, you know, building the machine that's now allowing us to take down these deals, not just here in California, but out of state as well. So uh, yeah, I'm again, excited about the rest of the team. Super excited about that deal. And, uh, you know, I see Sharina's in the, in the um, chat as well. She's uh, working with my uh, twin brother here in LA on the real estate side of things and stuff they're working on. And, um, you know, just kind of example of like when the, the whole machine is clicking, everybody's kind of doing what they should be doing. Um, we're able to process these opportunities, help these property owners, work with real estate agents, work with the wholesalers, and just create win-win stuff, right? Um, but also and kind that of- goes back to, again, the, the team thing, right? So, I mean, like, this is a property, and, and we've done this now a couple of times in California, where we've bought in properties sight unseen, you know, between you and I, but now this is a property that we're going to be buying- out of state sight unseen. And so again, like it just kind of goes to show that there's there's levels to it, but if you you know do it the right way the first time, it, it really is applicable down the line in, in different scenarios as well. Yeah, because a lot of the same principles apply. And then, you know, because we work so hard on adding value to our network, then we can lean on when we ask for, you know, somebody to help us, like they're there will open arms because we're so helpful as well in, you know, our journey. So, you know, it's just reciprocal. I think this is another example of that, of just like, huh, hey, uh, we, you never know when you could potentially work with someone. That's why, you know, you want to treat everybody, you know, fairly generously as possible. And then, you know, who knows when something will come up that you guys can work together on. It just has to be a win-win. Um, so just to kind of finalize, uh, I, I hopped over to Guadalajara real quickly for a day. I'm looking at this new uh, potential uh, upgrade of my penthouse over there. And so um, we'll see if I, you know, pull the trigger on that, but it's more space for me to actually uh, host more people there when we're going to be doing a mastermind this year in uh, Guadalajara. So, I think it's just going to be a good fit overall. I guess it's, I'm just so happy with my current place there. It's like, but I've been wanting to, you know, that upgrading that the unit is available to give me like the best deal you could possibly imagine. I mean, people are renting houses like in Compton for like me living in a penthouse apartment over there, you know, that that's like lavish and amazing. So we'll see. Um, so I went over there for a day, got back here to LA and I, and then immediately you guys, Will picks me up at midnight from LAX. We drive three hours to the desert, you know, crash over there. And Joshua Tree, and we just—I spent the day with this monster, driving around, 
Joshua Tree, Yucca Valley, Landers, all these areas that where it just is booming out there for some short-term rentals and for just in general, people are getting away from the big city. And uh, it, it, the, the, it's appreciating. People are renting uh, top dollar Airbnbs there. So we got like three projects there. We looked at three other properties. So was this a deal in the desert with this guy right here? Um, and so that was pretty and, cool. And one thing I want to point out on that, Alex, is like, you know, we actually went and saw some other people's deals, right? So we were comparing deals you know, not just looking at our own. And again, these were a couple of properties that we now have bought in without even seeing them. So the one property we saw yesterday, you and I had never seen, we drove up to it and we're like, wow, I guess, guess we bought this one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, it's still a great property, but you know, again, that's like, like oh, we, bought, we bought this junk. What is this over here? Like, we, yeah, it was like, yeah, we bought this thing. And it's like, right. no man, we, we saw it. Our team saw it. We saw the potential. We ran the numbers. But, uh, you know, it's always crazy when you kind of see that. And, and uh, the way that we were able to meet up with a couple of the other people over there is something that Alex talks about all the time, right? Social media. And so because of our posts on social media, somebody else who is active out there in the area reached out to us and we were able to kind of create a relationship there. And, uh, you know, just wanted to, again, kind of point that out, that that's, you know, week one, uh, Ask Alex webinar type stuff that we were talking about that's now coming full circle a year and a half later where, you know, again, we've gotten deals, we've gotten opportunities and, you know, we're building relationships on social Yeah, and, and let's be real about that subject real quickly, right? Where like, sometimes I have not been able to like build a solid relationship with certain investors I wanted to because they were at such a high level where it's like, man, like I don't really have that much to add value. I don't have that much to talk about. My problems are, not, are very different. But as we've grown, then we're able to like, we've attracted some other like, you know, some amazing players in the space that we could like, hey, you had genuine respect for each other you know, work and our body of work and, and the things that we're putting together. And then they're able to kind of, now we're coming from a place of like, hey, there's more alignment there, right? It was like, okay. We're, and I, I just love how we got to hang out with that, you know, William Green, because uh, I've been familiar with him for some time. And then, um, you know, we're, we're just collecting a lot of data points, you guys, because we do deals in core Los Angeles. We do deals in Antelope Valley. We know those markets, but, you know, Joshua Tree, Yucca Valley, all these other areas are a little bit different for us. Like, you know, we have a couple of projects, but we're, you know, still learning ourselves and we're starting, you know, we're, sitting asking questions to the other investors doing stuff there. We're asking questions to people that live there. We're asking questions to, to other um, agents that are doing a lot of deals there. So that way we can have a better understanding of what the real market, what the real opportunities there. And we're buying, you know, great deals. And we're not, you know, just like just settling for like average deals out there because we don't know the market that well. And we have, you know, the capital and whatnot. So I think that's just another lesson there that we're just doing a, as much research and, uh, you know, connections out there because, you know, I'm out there. I'm a, I'm, I'm a city guy, dude, I'm kind of at heart. And it's like, why do people want to be in the desert? Like, and then I look it out there and I see the attraction. I see the, you know, like, and I understand it now better. And I think that's super important for like, you know, investing. You need to understand what you're investing in, whatever that is, crypto, house hacking, you know, flipping houses, uh, multifamily. You need to understand what you're investing in. I can't stress that enough. And uh, we also got to do an amazing team dinner after the whole day in the desert, right? So shout out to everybody who was able to make it. Uh, I love, you know, being able to break bread, sit down with everybody, see where everybody's at. Hey, beginning of the year, I'm in LA. What's up, guys? How's everybody's, you know, uh, you know where's everybody at with their goals? What's what's everybody doing? And then we all, and then that restaurant we that had dinner at is across the street or close to the house that I'm going to be buying. And I'm going to be kind of house hacking myself in, you know, LA. So um, that was amazing to be able to kind of look at the property with everybody. Um, we didn't get inside because the tenants were still relocating, but um, just, you know, get the vibe of the area, you know, once we got there and had dinner at that nice restaurant. I'm super happy about that. But hey, guys, it's about insurance. I think we're ready to jump in, talk about Lorena um, and what she can give us advice on, on the sexy subject of insuring property. And before we bring her in, um, Alex, if you want to go ahead and make me host, I'll, I'll get Lorena in here in a second. But uh, just wanted to give a big shout out. I see uh, Jason over there in the chat, Jason Rivera just got his first house hack locked in. And, uh, you know, he said he's been following us here for a couple months and, and is now able to lock that in. So kudos to you, uh, Jason, if you don't mind sharing that on the Facebook group, you know, we love seeing wins in there and just give a little bit of information that way, you know, everybody else who's a step behind you can kind of get some info and, and see if that's something that they're maybe struggling with as well. So big, big shout out to you, Jason. Congratulations, man. That's awesome stuff. And I also just wanted to give a big shout out to everybody who's here in the chat that's come out and helped me at the house hack the last couple of days. I see a couple of familiar faces in here and I appreciate you guys coming out and helping and, and uh, learning from me while we're here. So let's go ahead and get things going here, Alex. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and bring in Lorena. 
our special guest for today. And, uh, we'll, we'll squeeze everybody for that free labor, huh, bro? I see you. <laughs> there you go, man. I mean, coming out, learning, getting a little feel for things, and, and also at the same time being able to uh, to kind of get a, a, a little bit more insight on, on a property, on a house hack, something that we don't normally do. Uh, but that's really awesome for those guys there. So I'm looking for Lorena, and I don't see her in the chat just yet. Hi. Okay, there we are. All right. <laughs> hey, what's up? How are you? How's everyone? Thank you for having me today. Yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, I guess the so first thing I want to kind of kick talk. things off with Lorena, because again, I mean, like Lorena is somebody that we work with on a regular basis, right, Alex? So I mean, like, I think there's something that that should be, you know, kind of mentioned about that because, you know, and we, we touched on it earlier, right? Like the main reason why, well, of course, great service and, and everything else that Lorena does, but you know, one of the main reasons why we use Lorena is because of her wealth of information in terms of real estate acquisitions, holding, buy and hold, like she is an investor herself. Um, so I would love for you to just kind of give a, a brief, you know, kind of background on yourself, Lorena, just a quick kind of, you know, snippet of, of why it is that you're doing insurance and, and uh, you know, why insurance is so important and, and what you're kind of doing in, in real estate yourself as well. Absolutely. Again, thank you guys for having me. So, um, you know, basically no rookie to insurance. I've been doing it, you know, shortly after high school. Um, I've been in the game already like for 22 years. Um, and ma mainly our niche and our agency, Casablanca Risk Management, has always been to facilitate the evidence of insurance at the close of escrow. So that's kind of like, you know, how we got our, our name out there. That's kind of what, you know, what set everything up. We started building relationships with realtors, loan officers, um, escrow people, processors, I mean, you name it, just to get our foot in the door. Um, and then it kind of just started taking off from there. And um, so again, you know, our niche is, is like, you know, facilitating insurance to, through escrow for home. But of course we do, we also do auto, we do condo, we do renter's insurance, life insurance, business insurance, commercial auto, you name it. So we can definitely help in all areas. And, and I like how you're, you're like the company name is an insurance, right? It's risk management. Management, yeah. Because that's like, and like reality. We're that's managing a big the piece risk. of it, right? Exactly. <laughs> it's not just you're insuring things, but it's like you're really managing the amount of risk. And obviously for us as investors, right? Like what's the number one thing we take on, Alex? Yeah, risk, yeah. right? Like we're, we're risking you know, assets that most other people might not normally buy because we think there's, you know, a potential for profit for it. So I, I think that term there, that risk management really is a, a huge mm -hmm. portion of it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm glad you pointed that out because a lot of people are like, wait a minute, um, what else do you guys do? Why does it say risk management? But in reality, it's an insurance term. So good call. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. 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 Yeah. Um, so, and then, and then I know that, um, you know, even though it's maybe not, I mean, the top subject we want to cover is what really fascinated me and really brought me to Lorena's attention is we were flipping a property next to one of her multifamily properties, right? So yes. we met, like, actually, her and I met at a, a, a Latino real estate um, event, I guess you would say, uh, some years ago, probably around, like, the 2012, 2013, that. Yeah, that I was going to say, that. like, 10 years, yeah. Yeah, like, almost, like, 10 years ago. And then um, I was going to use it for insurance and then for some reason didn't. And then I was flipping the property like about four years ago or three years ago. And it happened to be next to one of your properties. And I remember your name because it was a little bit different. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember this name. And I put you, I pulled her up on title and she had like a bunch of properties. So I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, okay, let me talk to her. Let's see what's going on with her. So really that was kind of like the what started me kind of reaching back out to her. I didn't tell her this right away because that would have been like kind of stalker. Like, <laughs> it was like, it was like hey, by the way, I, I looked you up and I found out you own a lot of companies. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, I was like, hey girl, what's up? Yeah, guess what? Like, you know, no, I was like, I remember you stalker. Just kidding. <laughs> no, it was nice. It was nice to reconnect. That's awesome. Yeah, and then and then we, and obviously we were rehabbing a property next to her multifamily, which would you know it kind of was a, a benefit to her. And I mean directly, but it was you know so we kind of mm -hmm. were aligned there, and then um, just slowly started like doing more deals in that area, and then so like we've always leaned on her because she, not only does she know insurance inside and out, but then she also knows investing and own investment property. And then we could kind of be real straightforward. This is what we're doing with the deal. And then that way we can be properly insured. But yeah, that's really where I all kind of came about. And I've been kind of like, just like, like you're going to be like my mentor to buy property in Antelope Valley. I, I always, I told her that and she didn't know it. <laughs> she didn't know it at first, but I found my way. You know, she, 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 you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know what, to touch a little bit about that, 
Um, so again, because I, I work with a lot of realtors, you know, back in the meltdown of 2008, um, you know, I had a couple of realtors calling my office, you know, wanting to insure these properties that they bought in Palmdale, Lancaster area for like $50,000. So, you know, because, you know, I'm a little bit nosy. I'm like, okay, um, where and who's helping you and what's going on here? I'm like, cause I got some money stashed and I get in on that. <laughs> So then that's kind of like what opened that, open up that whole thing, you know, like even realtors down here in the San Fernando Valley, we're using realtors out there because the commission is so low. They're like, you know what, I'm just letting them double pop it because I want my hands on that deal. So, you know, don't try to use me. Here's the number to the realtor down there, get in contact with them and, you know, break a leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's really how it all started. And, and, and you know, you, it really kind of like with you guys, you know, it just snowballs. It just snowballs. It started with like, I still, I still remember like I submitted my first offers in, in, in the month of June and nothing was getting accepted. I mean, back then, very probably similar to again today, you know, you're having 30, 40 multiple all cash offers on a property. Um, so it was the same situation. And then I kind of like, I was like, okay, well, maybe this is not for me. Let me just keep doing insurance. You know, let me just do what I do best. And then um, a couple months later, I had another client that called me. He's like, hey, you know, I need to insure these three houses that I just closed. And I'm like, okay, who is your realtor? Because that's what I need to talk to. So you know what? I got really aggressive. I started way overbidding. And, um, and it just, you know, I went from like getting nothing accepted over the summer and then come October, November, and all my offers were getting accepted. I was like, oh my God, like this is, this is crazy. Like it was just, it was amazing. And the snowball, yeah. right? It just, yeah, it, it, just kind of it just started snowballing. Exactly. And you guys, and, and, and I'm glad we kind of talked about this a little bit, but like what I noticed about her, you know, the portfolio, when I pulled her up, I was just like, you see that snowball because you can see the dates of acquisition. So you're like, okay, someone bought this property and they bought it. And I really liked how you got that 10 unit. And I was like, oh, yes, you got that 10 unit. But that was, you know, a good probably four or five, six years after your initial investing. Right? Totally. It all yeah. snowballed. You wouldn't have been able to buy that maybe initially, but then, you know, mm -hmm. you had the you had the experience and all that. And then you, you could just see the evolution of your acquisitions and the different properties that you purchased. And uh, I think, you know, people need to be reminded of that. Like, hey, that that's kind of like, you gotta take that first one, that first step and that leap, and then you get a couple and then it just really just snowballs. And before you know it, you're like, hey, you know, I, I'm, I got this thing, I'm pretty good right now. Like, you yeah, know, yeah, how yeah. do I wanna take this, you know? No, uh, exactly. And you know what? And a lot of people are like, wow, you're a female. What do you mean you do this? Like you by yourself, like you, you actually did this and hey, I got claws. <laughs> so, hey, but also I wanna highlight that you, you were aware of the it. opportunity and you took action which is something mm -hmm. that everybody can learn from you. You paid attention. You're like, damn, like you guys are getting the house for this price. And like, totally. what? I'm insuring it. And you're looking at the details, like when the thing built, like, you know, you kind of know the area, you know, also I'd like to give some context to you guys Like we kind of grew up in the San Fernando Valley. So mm -hmm. like the Antelope Valley has always been very kind of logistically close. So we, mm -hmm. you know, we have friends that move there and or we've done deals right in the past and doing business. And so you see this stuff, you're like, I mean, wow, like you're buying a house for this price in this area. Like, I don't think houses can get any cheaper than this. Like, no, why would I, no. Why would I not and buy to, this? Now, I, I don't I, even think they'll ever be cheap like that again. Like, yeah, that that was just crazy. Like, paying fifty thousand for a house, I'm just like, I don't think they'll ever see that. Like, that's yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, I mean, I mean, it's a different market, but the, the point is still like paying attention where the opportunity is and then taking action to pursue that opportunity. Correct. That's why I want to kind of highlight. Now, I, we did want to ask you though, like, you know, regarding like the best advice that you want to give investors, like for investing insurance property, because it is a little bit different than investing this normal property. What can mm -hmm. you say about that so we can kind of talk, have a conversation about like, what's the best advice you can give our audience regarding that? When insuring an, like a, a, a buy and hold property? Well, maybe we could just say, hey, if you're insuring a flip, you know, why is okay. it a little bit different? If you're, you're going to do a short-term rental on it, like an Airbnb, if you're going to maybe, uh, you know, if it's a long-term, just a regular tenant, how are we insuring that a little bit different? What advice can you provide? Okay, well, the most important piece, besides obviously coverage on the building, is always going to be your, your liability on the premises, because God forbid somebody get, gets hurt, or even like on a long-term rental, um, a dog bite, I mean, you just never know, so liability is really important. Um, and then it just varies depending on, on, on what the risk is, like obviously for a builder's risk, we want to make sure that, um, that we're insuring properly. 
because, you know, especially like if something happens, you know, like during the course of construction and you're just on a regular fire policy, the company can easily deny the claim and say, hey, um, you didn't disclose this. We're insuring it as just, I don't know, owner occupied, tenant occupied. It turns out the house is vacant. You have like 10 people working on the home. It now caught fire. You know, like what's going on here? So um, like you're lying. You're lying to us. Very honest with your agent. Like, hey, this is what I'm going to do. And even then it, it can it can change because we have companies that are like, hey, you know, minor cosmetic work. We can insure it under a personal lines policy. Um, and then, you know, there's and Lorena, you ask us that sometimes you're like, Hey, is this cosmetic or are yeah. you guys doing more? You know, like what, like, exactly. Are we again, tearing like, down we don't walls? Lie to Lorena. We want on. to let her know. Exactly. Are we adding square footage? All that stuff really factors in. I mean, and yes, yes. I will say that once you get to, to a builder's risk policy, it is going to be more expensive, but obviously the risk is there, you know, and as much as we hate insurance, it, it can really save us. I mean, I know even I hate insurance, you know, because mm -hmm. it's tangible, right? It's not tangible. Like, it's not like you're walking into a store and walking out with a pretty bag or something. It's not tangible, but it's there and I've seen it save so many, you know, people like, you know, financially. It can yeah, yeah. Sure. And I, I did notice a change too when I'm looking at the quotes and I'm like, you know, we're doing multiple deals. I mean, I, like another thousand dollars on a policy mm -hmm. times, you know, 10 houses, like 20 houses a year, like that's thousands of dollars. Of but course. like, you know, the, what's, what's the price of, you know, having that little bit more of that certainty that you're protected. Um, you really, it, 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 because it just takes one, big loss that could kind of wipe you out in this game oh, like yeah. starting out or kind of newer in the business like one big mm -hmm. loss can really set you back or get yeah. you out of the game so um you know we gotta make sure that people are aware of that so that's what mm -hmm. we want to talk to you about it um so what else about the flips and then you know what else you know short-term rentals like what you know short-term rentals that's another good one we have we have markets for that like for uh for your airbnbs you know that uh, that's also just not a tenant occupied policy that's uh that's called a like a seasonal like short-term rental so, um, so yeah, that we so, no, so definitely let, you know, your insurance the biggest you know thing that is because, to, is to, you know, talk to your agent, talk to your agent, you know, you know, be candid about what you're going to do so that in the event that something does happen, you know, your, your eyes are dotted, your T's are crossed. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Obviously like a short-term rental, you're having more than just one tenant in there, right? It's not like a long-term, there's going to be new people in regularly and that means Correct. new risk and new possible problems arising. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, you know, I, again, I, I, that's why whenever Lorena asks us, she's like, hey, what's going on with this house? What's the scoop on this house? It's like, hey, this is our exact plan. If it changes, we will let you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, yeah, that's important. Cause you know, especially in California, this is like lawsuit central. Like people are getting sued left and right. Um, you know, people are getting solicited. I get postcards like almost all the time. Like, hey, do you want to open up a claim? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do like? It's, were you in an Uber accident? I see those all over the highway here. It's like were everywhere. You in an Uber accident? Were you in something? And so there is a lot of insurance and a lot of claims. So I know exactly. we, were, we were talking a little bit about this off record. Just we were thinking about, hey, what is the best thing we can provide? You know, some mm -hmm. of the you know some of our audience and our tribe members. So what what would you say? I know we talked about some like recent trends that you're seeing that happening in the market. What can you talk about there as far as, you know, kind of current things that are happening within insurance that you can share? Okay, so right now, we're, what I was telling, um, you know, the guys earlier, right now, right now what we're experiencing is we're in, a, we're in a very difficult hard market. So we have a lot of carriers that are pulling away, especially here in California, um, because of the wildfires. I mean, the wildfires are crazy. And a lot of people think, well, I live in the city. Like, what does that have to do with me? I mean, obviously, when we think about an insurance company, it's a pool of everyone's money. Okay, so essentially, every month, everyone's money goes into that into that into that pocket. Like, let's say farmers insurance, you know, other clients, and then, you know, once all these claims start to pay out, you know, then they become not profitable. So, so that's what happens. You know, they require they when we see that our premiums go up higher year after year, that's because they've submitted paperwork to the Department of Insurance asking for a rate increase, which has been approved, okay? And then that's why we see our rates increase year after year. And um, the way it's going, it's, it's, it doesn't even look like it's gonna lower, you know? And you know, the fact that we don't have any rain in California, that's, that's bad, you know, hopefully whatever rain we did have back in December really helps us. But, um, but essentially, I mean, that, that's really what it is, you know? Um, companies are starting to see 
that they have no profits. You, you're having a lot of the big guys buy a lot of the smaller guys. Um, a lot of carriers that are just saying, you know, they're starting to measure like wind factors of fuel, you know, how close are you to the mountain, you know, hillside, all that stuff. And that's, you know, a lot of companies, they simply non-renew you or, or they won't even take you for an extra premium. They're simply just yeah, stay out of the risk. Yeah, and, and guys, I, I see a couple questions coming in on the chat. If you guys don't mind using the Q&A feature, it's right next to the chat button. Uh, if you put the questions in there, we're going to go ahead and uh, do a Q&A with Lorena at the end, and we'll get everybody on and, and share screen like we normally do. Uh, but mm -hmm. go ahead and use that Q&A just so we don't lose that question. We do want to make sure we get some, some specific questions answered here by the end. Okay. Cool. Um, I wanted to make a point of what you were saying a little bit earlier about the trends. And what I, I noticed too, is that uh, sometimes we, we weren't as proactive at the beginning part of a transaction to mm -hmm. get the insurance in order and, you know, kind of figure out who's every, you know, like you saying, every project is different. Like how much rehab is it going to be? How big is the house? Where is it at? You know, all these different factors. And so we've experienced delays. I, I think one was recently on the one in Hawaii because we had, you know, that mm -hmm. was in the lockdown zone, but also other ones we've had, you know, kind of here, in uh in SoCal, we're just like, dude, this could a delay a transaction a week, you know, or a couple of days. Um, where it was not like your fault or our fault, we just it just got kind of overlooked and we thought, oh, it's just insurance. We'll just, you know, but no, we have to answer questions, we have to kind of figure things out. We have to, you know, you gotta, you know, get us the best kind of the deal that you're gonna shop it around at times based on the project. And so yeah. uh, I encourage you guys to like look at your insurance more closely because we've yes. experienced like some st additional stresses like we're already it's already kind of a stressful situation sometimes buying a house in a week you know two weeks it's like adding like the insurance and and, and not having that in order it would just add additional stresses that we've seen so a uh, big recommendation to making sure you have that kind of in order and have somebody on the front end like yourself that can just provide clarity of what that's going to cost because uh, you know everything is a cost to the trans transaction and so that's going to you know these are numbers like is this going to cost us twelve hundred dollars or twenty two hundred dollars like that's a thousand dollars difference that you're going to bring yeah. to the closing table and it could be additional days or they might need to shop that around to get a better deal and save that 500 bucks and but mm -hmm. you know if you're up against the wall and you have to close next week you mean that you might have to pay that extra money so you know there's a couple things like that that i've noticed um that we're getting better at within our um you know transaction coordination but so thank yeah. you for that because I know we've kind of like, hey girl, we need a we need a policy like tomorrow. And you're like, oh, well, I don't even know anything about this. Whoa, policy. What, what happened? Yeah, what happened? What's going on? Yeah, wait, what's going on? Wait, it's falling apart. I don't, I don't even know. No one wants house to take it. Yeah, like what house is this? Which one is this? Like, yeah, no, but it's true. You know what? Even um, let's say you have an investor, even you guys are gonna buy a property that's really close to a hillside. Um, you know, be. A lot, what a lot of people are doing, a lot of agents are calling me because, you know, they, they have an offer accepted at this, you know, beautiful million dollar home that's right there by the hillside. You know, even a lot of the new developments, a lot of these party KB homes are right there because everyone's going into the hillside, right, to, to build because there's a shortage of housing. So, you know, um, whenever you have something like that, any kind of red flags, just run it, call me, run it by me and I'll tell you like, hey, you know what, this, uh, the, whoever's gonna buy this property, they have to factor in insurance. It's not what it used to be. Even like a year or two ago, it, it was a lot more lenient, but you know, it, it's just gotten so tight now that now buyers are having to, to, to pencil that in because you know, now with taxes, Melarus and, and um, and you know, and really high insurance premiums. You know, these are things that a lot of buyers are having to look after now. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that's like our California, you know, situation, mm -hmm. right? Like we're yeah. we're in a in a in a fire zone, fire hazard. What can you tell us about like some other areas? Like I know, for example, like we buy in the Antelope Valley, right? And there's like yeah. flood zones. And Alex, I know for you out in in the uh, the Hawaiian Islands, you have like lava flow zones and different yeah. like kind of insurance barriers what what are what are some you know trends or, or insight that you can kind of give because there's a lot of folks on here from the from the maui and, and hawaiian islands and a lot of folks out here in california and a lot mm -hmm. of folks outside mm -hmm. of california that might have some of those non-fire situations okay well i'll be honest with you i only insure in california unfortunately i wish i had more info on maui but probably the rules are you know very similar except that the risk is different so like you you mentioned flood flood there's obviously um an annual flood mapping that the companies conduct so basically if the if the property is in a flood zone there's no way out of it 
there's absolutely no way out of it. The, if you have a lender, you know, because it's a lender requirement. If you own that house free and clear, then forget about the flood policy. Um, but but yeah, I mean, they pretty much map what flood zone you fall under. The, the flood zone is going to determine the premium. Now, the nice thing about flood um, is that we, we're working a lot with the private flood insurers. So um, other than having to go through the through FEMA, through the NFIP, the, the, the private insurers, their cost is like, I've seen even less than half. So it's awesome. It's really awesome. And a lot of the mortgage companies are starting to pick up on that because they meet all the FEMA criteria. So they can't really say no to the policy, even though it's a Lloyd's of London policy or a surplus lines, not admitted carrier. So um, when it comes to flood, there's a, uh, there's other avenues. It's the brush that's a little trickier. <laughs> okay, so good, good. Um, so I think this is a uh, value here. And then the, what about like you know regarding filing claims and stuff like that? Because like you know nobody wants to file a claim. You know, oh, yeah. if it get denied. Um, I know you've had you know probably a lot of experience with claims in general. Mm -hmm. What would you like? What kind of advice can you give to you know to the, some of our audience regarding that? Because I know you gave us great advice and it helped us turn that deal around and we were able to kind of just we we were on the fence whether we should fix it ourselves because it was kind of mm -hmm. doable or should we just go ahead and file the claim and we kind of yeah. you know, we end up deciding we're going with the claim and it really worked out it, even though it was kind of a headache um yeah what can you talk in terms of like claims you know that's a great question that's a really good question because you know claims in california i couldn't say for other states but in california it's very much like getting a ticket like you're driving or, you know, you're getting a ticket. So they stay on your record for five years. So assuming you're a person that has a water claim in, I don't know, 2019, and you come to me today, unfortunately, that claim is going to still be on your record. It's going to follow you. So the market basically narrows down. Not a lot of companies want to take you anymore. So I always say like, hey, if it's something small, just don't even, don't do it. Don't do it. Just fix it yourself. You know, it's part of being a homeowner, you know, um, but obviously if it's something big and, and you can't go around it by all means, you know, that's really what insurance is for. But um, but yeah, just so you know, the companies are looking at claims and the claims follow you. So, for example, if I have a claim on one of my properties, but I'm insuring a different property, it's still going to come out on my record. And if that and property has a claim company, right? as well, that's two claims. And you can't say like, hey, I got a claim with one company and go around them and try and get a, an account with somebody else. They would be able to, they, that yeah. follows to them as well, right? Exactly. So every, every, I will say that every company does have a different underwriting criteria. So, you know, it's just a matter of analyzing that particular risk that we're working on. Um, but some companies are like, oh, you know, if it's on a, if it's on a previous property, I won't count it. And we have another company, oh, if it's a new purchase for the buyer and the claim is on the property, not on him or her, again, they'll enter as a clean, you know, clean slate. So, you know, again, every company is different. There's other companies that are like water. I don't want to touch it. Water claims are trending so high right now. It's, it's crazy. We're seeing way more water claims and we're seeing fire claims. So yeah, companies are just like they're just yeah. I mean, and we, and we wouldn't have water. filed ours, but it was like it was another. It's going to be another twenty five, you know, thousand dollars, and we're just like, you know, like yeah. that, that's that's not little at that point, you know. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah. people file claims for like I don't know twelve hundred dollars, and then after they're deductible, they're only getting like a two hundred dollar check. Like I'm like, oh god, why did they? That's do that? yeah, that's a little for low. Her. You know, I think there's there's it definitely was, a certain yeah. threshold. It didn't make sense. Correct. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, and then also we wanted to kind of just kind of highlight the fact like there's insurance agents that work for like specific companies like State Farm and you know all that. And mm -hmm. then there's insurance brokers kind of like yourself. Like what's mm -hmm. the difference and why would someone actually use a broker over just going to you know a company directly and working with them? And, okay. and I love that question, Alex, because yeah, like so many people don't understand the difference like, like with a broker versus an actual insurance company. Yeah. So I, yeah, break that down for us later because that's a, a great question, Alex. Okay, so basically, like, let's say you're walking into a state farm office, right? I mean, this person solely only sells state farm products, you know, so they have their niche and, um, and, and they're basically working on behalf of the company. When you work with a broker, you know, you can have conversations with me off the record. I work for you, you know, and, and you know, I, I put my expertise to work and I start searching for the best rate, the best company. 
you know, whatever is best for the customer. And we yeah. can always have conversations off the record versus if you have a state farm agent and you disclose like, I don't know, an example, like, hey, um, I have a tenant, you call your state farm agent, hey, I have a tenant and they have a pit bull on the property. You know, you know, they're going to underwrite you for that versus you're calling me. I'm going to be like, OK, well, I recommend that we do this about it. You know? Yeah, well, exactly. Well, I think notice it's, it's before the out. company does find out, because this is what can happen. You know? Yeah. And I, I do want to just also highlight, highlight that. It's a difference between you're just like, hey, I'm a property owner. I just like own one house and I just kind of like, you know, maybe have one rental compared to like with us where we're like, we're actively pursuing more and more deals. And it's like, you know, we're, we're working on a volume of deals. Like we need to have people like yourself in our corner compared to just mm -hmm. like just a cookie cutter. It's like, I can't go to a, every single bank and just ask for a loan. Like every bank maybe not going to see me the same as bankable. Whereas if I go to a broker, I'm looking for this type of, you know, a loan, I think. So I think they, that's really important that people understand that, hey, you know, having an insurance broker is an option for you. Maybe if you're just a traditional homeowner, you know, it's mm -hmm. not the, the best option because you're just like, hey, you're just doing a, one property once a year. But when you're like actually pursuing a, a genuine opportunities on a regular basis like us, like multiple deals a year, like, mm -hmm. I mean, the properties all kind of vary, you know, and the risk varies. And, exactly. and like, I never expect, I mean, that house to like just flood, like, in, you know, in the middle of it being listed um mm -hmm. you know and, and stuff like that we can't predict what can happen but we can't protect ourselves i think that's a, that's the point there so um, absolutely I wanted to ask, I just, to, you know just hey yeah maybe you pay a little bit more but then like you actually have someone that's in your corner so awesome. and you know what speaking speaking of paying a little bit more if you're gonna just be on the risk for i don't know three four months six months you know you're you're entitled to to get some of that premium back so don't look at the whole annual premium you know if, if eventually if you get rid even if you get rid of it if you do an assignment on it within a week, we can cancel it in a week and you're gonna get most of your money back. So, you know, don't focus on the premium, focus more on, you know, how long you're gonna be on it, you know, just do the math monthly for you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because, you know, if the premium say you thought it was gonna be 1500 for the year, but instead it's three grand, I don't just use an extreme. And it's like uh -huh. not $300 a month, you, you flip the house in four months, yeah, it costs you $1,200. It, it is what it is, it's cost of, you know, being protected for those four months compared mm -hmm. to like, oh, well, let me, Try a nickel and diamond, and something happens during the four months, and then you have a claim, it doesn't get paid out, and then it costs you 30, 40, 50,000. Like, exactly, you know, exactly. That's the reality of what we're dealing with here with these type of investment properties because they are vacant, you know, and yeah. sometimes they're in entry level areas that can get broken into. And I think oh, yeah. with other investors, thankfully, thank God, we really haven't had that much of that happen, but I've seen it happen to countless, countless of times. That's why I, I mean, I look at premiums and I just like, okay, it is what it is, but mm -hmm. like. I don't question them because now we've worked enough together to know like, hey, you know what we're working on and you know our business and you understand our business, just like our listing agent understands our business. He's working, he's not getting a full commission because he's getting a two houses a month to sell, you know, one, at least yeah. one. And totally. so, um, you know, you structure relationships around that all kind of, you know, win-win. So I don't have any other questions that you answered my questions. I want to, is there anybody uh, on the tribe here that has some questions for Mrs. Uh, expert in insurance here, Lorena? Um, remember, she's also an investor. She owns dozens of property i won't say how many but she's you know she's a boss <laughs> yeah and guys again like this is your chance to to ask you know somebody who is not only an investor but also somebody who's a, a broker has access to a couple of different companies um you know that she works and and you know secures insurance from so uh we'll kick things off in the q a chat i, I have a great question here from ulysses he is okay. wondering and he's up in santa cruz just so you know so he's and one in Santa, Cruz? Uh, Santa Cruz is up in Northern California, just south of the Bay Area, San Francisco. Yes, yes. And so Ulysses is wondering, do you, you know, cover insurance and, and provide your, your risk management services up there? Yeah, Absolutely. all over California. The whole state. And we deal with wildfires in Northern California, Central, Southern California. It's all uh, pretty similar uh, when it comes to kind of insurance, right? So Correct. Um, Ulysses, if, if you need any help, I know Lorena put in her Facebook group and some of her contact info over there, but make sure uh, you get in touch because I know you're just starting to get things kicked off and, and uh, doing some more deals as well. So uh, absolutely. Good stuff there. Yeah. And, and I know Alex uh, Bocanegra has got a great question here asking about water claims. So why is it that you think water claims are up recently? Like, what is that, that trend? What's kind of leading to that trend? Is it, is it just something that's easy to file for and, and try and claim against? Is it, 
you know, what, what would make that trend kind of, you know, be increased right now versus, a, you know, something like a wildfire? I mean, I, I, I would probably say it's maybe like a lack of maintenance, you know, because even um, like, let's say we see a lot of water claims, especially during rain season. Like, for example, in December, we had a pretty heavy rainy month. Um, you know, people just calling in, hey, you know, I got home from work and, you know, I noticed that, that there's water coming through my roof. So just so you know, like on a, on a homeowner policy, owner occupied, um, we don't cover the actual roof. Insurance covers secondary damages, okay? So the company's not going to come and say, hey, let me just replace your whole roof. It looks like it's, it's worn out, you know, it's giving out already. No, we're going to cover the secondary damages. So assuming that there was a leak, and it damaged your walls, you know, your flooring, maybe some furniture along the way. Um, that's what the company is going to cover. Now that can be claimed damages. against. You know, like you said, it's not the roof, but it's the stuff that is damaged because of that. So that, that's that's a big part of it, right? And Correct. I, I think you made a great point there, right? Deferred maintenance, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of the people in here are looking for flips. Mm -hmm. And guess what we're typically looking for in flips, right? Is deteriorated properties, like properties that are in distress. And so... You know, that mm -hmm. might be something that definitely comes up uh, more prevalent, right? Like if you have yeah. a roof that you're buying, you might have some, you know, some roof claims that could come from it if you don't get that handled sooner than later. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and that's why, you know, even like it's, it's that's why every time there's an escrow that closes, we conduct an inspection on the property. We don't do it. You know, the company sends a third party and of course we get the report and we have to follow up with the, with the insured. Um, but one of the biggest, biggest things that they're looking at is that roof. It's it's the roof because that roof, you know, it's it's just gonna it's gonna cause a lot of issues along the line. So the company would rather just shake it off and say, hey, here's your cancellation date. You either send me proof that you replaced your roof because we don't even want you to repair it. Some companies are okay with repairs. Um, again, it just depends what company you're with, you know, and that's that's the beauty about working with the broker. We have an array of companies, and I can, you know, if someone says, you know what, I don't have the money today to do a roof, it's a $15,000 expense, you know, then I do whatever I can, like, okay, let me place you here for a year, but promise me you're going to change the roof so that I can replace you here. Um, you know, things like that. Yeah. Any other great, questions? Great, uh, great description there. I know like that's a, a question that I'm sure, um, you know, probably comes up more oftentimes than not. Um, we got another great, great question here. This one's from an anonymous attendee, but Lorena, they're wondering, I know you mentioned you do properties, you cover auto insurance. Mm -hmm. Like what other insurances do you do? Uh, do you do like renter's insurance? Do you do, yeah. you know, flip specific insurance? Pretty much any kind of insurance that you could need to acquire in California, you're able to help source that in some way or another, right? I don't do or is health there anything insurance. you don't do. Health insurance, I don't, I don't touch, but I do do like home, I'll do tenant occupied, a renter's condo, uh, umbrella um you know life auto commercial auto i do apartment buildings like all your habitational risks um what else um businesses you know like a like a small mom and pop shop retail all of that stuff beauty salons restaurants um pretty much we have uh rashawn asking in landlord insurance yeah i'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's tenant tenant insurance. which is tenant so, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, since you, um, you know, have a lot of rental property, how, have you had any issues with like insurance yourself or as far as like what advice can you, I mean, it, regarding like just long-term tenants and having like, you know, small multifamily or multifamily in general, is there anything there specific that you want to share? Um, you know, the, probably the biggest factor, you know, the maintenance, you know, making sure that they're keeping the area clean, um, you know, that they're not bringing any vicious breed dogs because a lot of the companies do have like a, an exclusion. So basically at the purchase of the policy, there is a policy jacket that's mailed to every customer and it goes into the specifics as to the breeds that are excluded. So like if you have a pit bull, a Rottweiler, a chow chow, you know, um, that's the biggest one, you know, as a, and, and if it's a buy and hold property, you, you want to make sure that they don't have that breed because if that if there is a dog bite they're not going to sue the tenant they're going to come after the owner and i mean the and dog bites of those breeds are very common oh very common i see it all the time i see it all the time like somebody someone in an apartment building in one bedroom has a you know a rottweiler and then he bites somebody else another tenant 
they and they sue the landlord because of that situation. Yeah. And then what does that look like for the landlord? And what is his damages? What is he paying? Though? Let me tell me. Like walk us through like an actual scenario on that. Like if that's that common. Well, well, here's the thing. When you have liability insurance under your policy, you don't necessarily have to lawyer up. You know, you can furnish whatever lawsuit to the insurance company and then just let them dictate it. They have their team of people that are going to represent you in the, in, you know, in the, in the, in the gotcha. but of course, like anything, people, are, you know, companies always settle. It doesn't even make it to court most of the time because it's more expensive. Um, so it's nice to just be able to, to, to submit that. But of course, you know, a company could come back and say, Hey, it was a pit bull and it was on your policy jacket. So I'm sorry, I'm going to deny this claim. So something like that can cost you a lot of money. It's better to be a proactive landlord, you know, make sure you're passing around your property, give them a three day notice, a, a, you know, a cure quit to make sure that, that they get rid of that dog. I actually have that situation today. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow <laughs> yeah 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 yep i have that situation today so i'm gonna go serve a, a three-day cure quit tomorrow <laughs> wow look at that. Over a pit bull. and you know and because i see it here a lot in my office i'm just scared of it i'm just like oh god oh god oh god that god that dog needs to go <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 so we have a, a follow-up question from marco related to dogs is you know is this something that you can kind of like mitigate by writing that into your lease that hey i'm not gonna allow you to bring a pit bull in, like, you know, you're leasing it today. If you were to get a pit bull tomorrow, like you would need to cancel your lease. Well, you know, from what I, from what I know, and, and you guys can probably uh, confirm this, the car forms, like the leases from there, they already exclude animals, I believe. I think there's a whole section on there that's already pre-written. You just have to glance at it and make sure that, that the, you know, that the, that the tenant is signing off on that. Yeah. Love that. So that's that's a, a great, great piece of feedback there for you, Marco. And, and I know we got another, you know, couple of questions that are pretty relevant here, especially for California and California, um, mm -hmm. you know, flippers and, and investors. How important is insurance uh, for earthquakes out here? I know California, you know, we're right on a fault line. You know, is mm -hmm. that something that's worth it or is that, you know, something you can kind of pass on and then skimp out on? Okay, well, for starters, earthquake insurance is not mandatory, but we are obligated to offer earthquake, an earthquake offer to every single homeowner. So, but statistically, only about 10% of homeowners have earthquake insurance. Do you have it on your property? I don't. I don't. Okay. The thing. So you're part of that 90%, insurance. just like us. I love exactly. it. Exactly. Well, you know what? It's not cheap. It's not cheap and the deductibles are crazy. So here's the thing about insurance. So let me give you an example. If your house is covered for 300,000, um, they, have, they have deductibles as low as I think 5%, 10%. Um, they go up to, I wanna say like 25%. But typically people go with like 10, 15% deductible. So let's say it's a 15% deductible and your dwelling coverage is 300,000. You're looking at a $45,000 deductible. Wow, that's not cheap. You know, and it's on a $300,000 house, right? Yes. So that's a, a almost, you know, sixth of the value right there, right? Exactly. 100,000 on, on a nice house in, in LA, you know? <laughs> yeah, so essentially you're going to have to have like a big damage to, you know, maybe the foundation. I'm not, you know, the Northridge earthquake, that one really crushed us. So maybe on a situation like that, you know, possibly. Um but a lot of people see these numbers and they just get discouraged. That's the truth. Yeah, that, I mean, that's uh, like you said, it's for very the cost of it and then for that deductible, that's not really, you know, something that's that attractive for a, a mom and pop landlord, for example, or, or exactly. a, you know, a first or second time homeowner or something. So yes, yeah, somebody stuff. asked me about that. I'm how like... you did a real life example, because I mean, like that's that's real stuff that you're dealing with today. Same with the dog. Mm -hmm. Like these are actual things that are, are happening regularly. For oh, all the, all the time. That's great. All the time. Yeah. And, not, and that, you know what, not only not only the dog, even like people with the pool, you know, people at the pools, you know, I've just one time in my career, I did see where someone got sued by um, it was a it was a gentleman, his um, his sister in law sued him because her little boy drowned and died. So, wow. you know, very unfortunate. So he was like, well, you're going to have to sue me because I obviously don't have the money to to pay you, you know, and, and really like does does. There's no price tag to somebody's life. Loss of life is hard to put a quantity on, right? So like that exactly. could go to court for years and years and years until yeah. they determine, hey, that kid was eight years old. He probably could have gone on to make, 
you know, exactly. about a hundred million dollars, and sometimes there's you know damage limits in, in areas. So that, that's exactly. uh, that's crazy, right? So the bigger the exposure, the more you want to insure yourself. Um, I'm a big advocate of umbrella insurance as well um, for someone you know who has multiple properties and you know. Uh, Do we have that? Exposure, a lot of exposure. No, you guys. I like are, Alex is like, wait, do we have? Yeah, he's like, wait, we need to get some umbrella insurance. Let's go. Yeah. Let's, let's, but, uh, uh, let's start talking, right? If you have like, if you buy and hold umbrella insurance, it's really good because it, you know, it just it protects all of your assets. Well, we're holding a lot more now, so like we're gonna have to talk about this. Well, you know, wait, let's talk about it. Yeah. Okay. So let's see that that's it. that's something that we learn here on the call as well, guys. So I love that. And you know what? An umbrella is affordable. It's affordable. Obviously, the more properties you have, the more expensive it gets because you have to endorse everything. I mean, if you if you have like young drivers too, you know, okay. it's basically an umbrella to all your assets. So you have to name everything. If you have four cars, we we have to make sure we name them. If you have ten rentals, we we gotta name those your primary residence. If you own a boat, um, some jet skis, everything. It's basically, it's an umbrella to cover everything that you have. Yeah, all right, cool. I love that, the you know, whole umbrella. So yeah, Alex, that's something that we'll have to look into. I know uh, Jason's got another killer question here and, and uh, you know, it, it kind of is related to this. So it's like, are there any additional coverages that you recommend, you know, for people that are doing flip rehabs outside of just your, your traditional insurance? And it sounds like, you know, maybe a, an umbrella policy if you're buying and holding, but what if you're doing like two or three flips at a time? Is there any additional coverages that you might need, you know, for your general contractors, workers, things like that, or is liability enough to cover those? You know, for your contractors, I would recommend that they, that if they can, and they should be able to, to add you as an additional insured. If you're working with one contractor on a specific property, they can add you as an additional insured to their policy. So, you know, just make sure that your contractor is insured that if, you know, that if they have uh, workers working for them, that they do have workers compensation coverage for their employees so that they don't, try, you know, get, get hurt on your premises and they try to sue you. Yeah, and you actually just answered one of Allison's questions that, you know, if you should kind of have the contractor put you under their insurance. So that's, you know, something new that, that we didn't even know. And I mean, you know, for us, we use a couple of different contractors, so it might, you know, be a little bit more difficult, but, you know, something if you are using a contractor mm -hmm. regularly for repeat business, that might be something that, you know, benefits you as a, uh, as a homeowner, a home flipper, an investor, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and, uh, we should add that to our process, bro, where we just like have, you know, uh, the project manager, whoever's managing that project, talk to them and, and make sure they have the insurance policy. In mm -hmm. place. For sure. We put on their policy. We need 1000%. Because I know for a fact that we're not checking every single contractor and whether they have insurance or not now currently. I mean, I was mm -hmm. just keeping it real. So we got to add that. Well, so yeah. at the very least, get a certificate of insurance from them. They should be able to facilitate that with their policy number and, you know, all that good yeah. stuff. Yeah, of course. Cool. You guys are getting some value out of here. Thank you, Lorena. Um, some more, Thank any more you questions guys. we didn't answer yet? Um, yeah, we got one more question on here. Uh, Nick uh, Saran is just asking, do you prorate the insurance on a flip? And I know you already mentioned. Yes. Yes, you do. Like if you do a, a wholesale and you wholesale it tomorrow, you still need to have it insured if you're double closing on it. But, you know, if you get out of that deal the next day and you've already assigned that to somebody else, then yeah, exactly. Lorena said that. You know they can prorate that insurance for that. Yeah, and I just, you know, I just cashed, or whatever it was. That you I, I kid you not, I just cashed like a thousand dollars, eleven hundred dollars in insurance refund checks that I was very delighted to get in the mail. I'm like, oh wait, insurance is another one. Okay, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, cool, yeah. Because we finished the flip faster than we expected than what we paid out on the on for the premium. So um, you know, you will get that money back, but and you're insured bet, you know, insured properly. I think that that's a win-win. What's up, my man Scott Bruce with the yachts in the back? <laughs> My buddy. Love it. And uh, the last question we had coming in here from uh, Alex uh, Bocanegra is, uh, are you ever really 100% covered? <laughs> and I love that question because that, that's a good one. <laughs> that right? Like, are you hey, ever the, fully covered? Oh, that, that was hard to answer. Yeah, that's, that's a fair really hard question. To answer. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's a good question, but I mean... Not on the maintenance. You got to fix your own roof. That's part of being a homeowner. <laughs> Thank you, plumbing. <laughs> Nothing in life is guaranteed but taxes and death, right? Yes, sir. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I, I love that question, but uh, yeah, I agree with you, right? You're never fully covered because there's always something that can go wrong and, you know, exactly. something that, that's out of your scope. I, I like how you use the uh, earthquake example, like really only 10% of people have that coverage. So like, 
even those 10 percent do you think they have the five other coverages like flood insurance you know fire insurance probably they skimp out on one or two of those so that they can do that other one so oh, yeah. um, that, that's a great great uh, great insight there Oh, anybody have any other questions for Lorena or comments about the value you got? I know we uh, have a lot of property owners here on the call, business owners, entrepreneurs. What's up, everybody? I see some newer faces. Um, thanks for joining. Yeah, now's your chance, guys. If you have a question, you know, and you didn't get an answer or you didn't put it in the chat, um, you know, chime in now because this is, uh, you know, a really incredible broker that we have on the call here providing some incredible value. So uh, if, you, if you have any last minute questions, guys, let I have a in, question. Let I have fire. a question. If you're not in California and you want to find a great insurance broker, how would you find that person, Lorena? Oh, God. You, sorry. Google. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. Google. There you go, guys. I honestly, I don't have any contacts. I wish I had at least one other for another state, but. I have a bunch of investors I know, guys. If you want to insure property in a different area and find a great broker, let me know. I'm happy to, like, you know, check around. If you That's guys awesome. Need something at some other state. But, um, I, had, I had luck out of state going through either the local realtor property manager as well to find a good insurance person. Nice. There you go. The referrals, always, always the best. And right. um, especially um, make sure that they, they know their area and or the asset class they're insuring. Um, yeah. All right. Well, my deal makers, I think that's all we got for today then. And if you guys don't have any questions, it's great uh, seeing uh, Lorena and uh, giving us all your insight about insurance. Thank you guys for showing up as usual. Let's get some deals, and that way we'll need. Yeah, insurance. and and I did add my my uh, Facebook and my Instagram, so you guys, if you guys can please follow me. If you have any questions, go ahead and send me a, a DM, and we can take it from there. Thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it. Hopefully, right. I invited Aloha. again. <laughs> See ya. Let's get some deals. So we need insurance. See ya. Yes.